minus 50 seconds. T minus 40 seconds. T minus 30 seconds. T minus 20 seconds. Before we begin, <coughs> dear audience, you are reminded to always turn off your microphone to avoid disturbing the speakers. Everyone is welcome to ask any questions at all, but every question will be answered after each of the presentation. You may drop your question in the chat box or raise your hand to us. You are also reminded to sign in your attendance. The link to the attendance may be found in the chat box. Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. Welcome to Digital Marketing 101 session. We are so glad to have you all join us on this very valuable knowledge sharing session today. Thank you for spending your time to be with us. Let me introduce myself. My name is Nurul Ainata Shah, or shortly known as Tasha, and I am going to host this session today. But before we begin, let's together recite the dua. I invite Muhammad Imran bin Muhammad Irsham to lead the prayer. Ila hadrati Nabi Mustafa Rasulillahi sallallahu alaihi wasallam sallam Karam al-Fatiha A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Ar-Rahmanirrahim Malik yawmidin Iyaka na'udu wa iyaka nasta'amin Ila sirat al-mustakim Sirat al-lazina a'lamta alayhim Ila mahdubi alayhim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wal mursalin. Wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in. Ya awalan awalin, ya akhiran akhirin. Ya zankuatin matin, wa ya rahimun masakin, wa ya arhamun rahimin. La ilaha illallah wa hanimun kareem. Subhanallahi rabbil arshil azim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Asaluka mujibat rahmatim wa azai wa maghfiratim. Wa la ghanimata min kulli birin wa salamata min kulli ismin. لا تدع لنا ذنبا إلا غفرت ولا حما إلا فرجته ولا هاجة هي لك رضا إلا قديتها يا رحم الرحيم يا الله يا كريم سُنُعُنَّ كَمِي بِرِهِمْبُونَ بَعْدَ هَذِهِ إِنِّي بَعْيِ مِنْيَتَكَنْ كُشْكُرَانِ دِيَاتَسْ كُنْيَانِمُ يَنْتِدَ تَرْنِيلَيْ يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم سُنُعُنَّ أَنْكَوْ مَحَمْ عَتَهُوِي بَعْوَ كَمِي دِسِنِي إِنِّي مِنِبَوْ إِلْمُ مُنْيَانْ سَعْنَ لُوَاسْ بَعْيِ مَنْعَمْبَانْكَنْ بُوَتَنْسِي كَمِي سَبَعِي هَمْبُمُ يَانْ أَنْكَوْ رَضَائِ جُسْتُرُوْ سَبَعِي هَمْبُمُ يَانْ Justeru berkati dan rahmatilah perhimpunan kami ini, kurniakanlah kepada kami ilmu-mu. Sinarilah hati-hati kami dengan cahaya dan hidayah-mu. Semoga dengannya kami mudah menerima dan menghayati serta mengamalkannya. Ya Zal Jalali wal Inkram, kurniakanlah jua kepada kami kesihatan anggota, kecergasan minda, ketenangan jiwa, kekuatan semangat. Semoga dengannya kami mampu mendepani cabaran, berdaya saing dan mampu mengangkat martabat diri, keluarga, masyarakat dan negara. Allahumma a'ina ala zikrika wa syukrika wa usnia al-ibadatik. Rabbana la tuzik kulubana ba'ali izhadaitana wa hablana min ladunka rahmatan innaka antar wahab. Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa zuriyatina karata'ayin wa ja'alna limutakina imama. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa ilam taghafilana wa tahamna lana kunana minal khasirin. Rabbana atina fi dina sanata wa fil akhirat ya sanata wa kina azabanar. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam wa sallam wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Dekallahu wa minkum Amin, amin ya rabbal alamin Thank you so much Imran for leading the prayer Dear audience, recently we can see just how much online businesses are emerging All traditional business started moving towards online And many people started joining the online market as entrepreneurs Some even started at a very young age with this, we can see just how vital digital marketing is starting to become. That's why today, you are all asked to share your knowledge and experiences about the most popular digital marketing techniques in Malaysia. 
Therefore, we present to you Digital Marketing 101, in which will be held in three sessions starting today until the 6th of December 2021. Many amazing and important topics will be covered, so be sure to not miss them. It will be aired live on DMAC Club official YouTube channel. But especially for today's session, we will be listening to three digital marketing techniques, namely mobile marketing, email marketing, and display advertising. But before that, the attendees, do not forget to sign in your attendance. You can find the link for the attendance in the chat box. So now, without further ado, let's welcome our very first group with their topic, mobile marketing. This topic will be presented by Nurul Shazrina Binti Samoen, Nurul Faizal Shaira Binti Salam, Daniel Anak Noha, and Muhammad Ashrafuddin bin Zahari. But before that, everybody is welcome to ask any questions to the team in the chat box. All questions will be answered after the presentation of each group. So now, let's hear from the team. Okay. Hello, hello, and a very good morning to everyone who is watching from whichever platform. I really hope everyone is staying safe and well. Um, me and my teammates are very honored to be the first one who is presenting today. Uh, next slide, please. So before we start with anything, let me introduce ourselves first. My name is Nurul Shazrina binti Samoen. Um, these are my teammates, uh, Muhammad Ashrafuddin bin Zahari, Nurfaisa Zahira binti Salam, and Daniel Anak Nohak. It is very pleasant for us to be in this sharing session. So for today, our groups will be sharing with you guys about mobile marketing. Ever heard of mobile marketing? Mobile marketing can be defined in a lot of ways. The Mobile Marketing Association, known as MMA, defines mobile marketing as a set of a practice that enables organizations to communicate and engage with their audience or customers in an interactive and relevant manner through any mobile device or network. So to simply define the concept of mobile marketing, according to Scarl, Dickinger, and Murphy, these three researchers have stated that there are four different terms. There's mobile marketing, mobile advertising, wireless marketing, and wireless advertising. Can you see the difference between those four terms? So like, basically we can say that mobile marketing is an advertising activity that promotes products and services via mobile devices, like our phones and tablets. It is a way where technology can be used to create customized product or service promotions for users who are constantly connected to the internet and I'm pretty sure everyone is connected to the internet nowadays. So I really hope that gives you a really clear picture of what mobile marketing is. That's just a startup. Now let's not waste our time and move on to the next topic. I will pass this to my friend Ashrafuddin for this next topic. Uh, thank you, Shazrina. Now that we know the definition of mobile marketing, let's find out about the advantage that mobile marketing brings us. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, I will be telling you three advantages that you can get from using mobile marketing. The first one is mobile marketing is always on, always connected, and always with consumer. Uh, I believe there are some marketers who are watching this. Using mobile marketing, marketers can create offers and deals for, for their product based on special weather condition and natural disaster. An example for you to see the bigger picture, during a storm disaster, marketer can offer their suitable product and donate a portion to a specific foundation. It is like why you why you promoting your product, you are also inviting them to do good deeds, which, which make them even more interested. Uh, the second advantage is mobile marketing is able to generate location sensitive offer. Wherever your customers are, marketers can always reach them to give them an alert about something. Just like how big companies create their own application, application so their consumers could get immediate information about their product by downloading the app. Uh, marketer can provide special product information to consumer within a specific ICA. Um, the last advantage that I can share today on mobile marketing are mobile marketing can send relevant personalized messages and offers. 
since our phone and, and tablet are generally not shared with others in the same family or household, marketers can customize message to each different customer based on their own purchase story, social media usage, demographic data, and user behavior that come from the firm customer loyalty program. Uh, we can take Shopee as an example. As soon as you search a certain product in the search engine, Shopee will automatically give more recommendations for similar products that are in the same region as the one that you just searched. If you notice, Shopee will keep sending you notification related to the product that you search until your further action. Um, so now that I have revealed some of the advantage of mobile marketing, uh, let's go back with Shazrina for the, for the next topic. Yes, thank you Ashrafuddin for that really eye-opening information about mobile marketing. Okay, thank you. Let's move on to the mobile marketing types. Now, mobile marketing can be divided into a few types, which I will be sharing four types of them. There is mobile advertising, mobile sales pro promotions, mobile direct marketing, and mobile customer relationship management, also known as CRM. So advertising is defined as any paid form of non-personal presentation and promotion of products, services, or even ideas by an identified sponsor. Although many suggest that advertising uses mass media, in this new era, advertising can also be made in mobile media that is not a mass media in the same sense as television, radio, or press. So mobile advertising can be classified into four categories. There's web category, which includes mobile internet, such as banner ads and industrials, mobile search and mobile portal. The second category is broadcast category, which includes mobile broadcast radio, stream, and or broadcast mobile TV services, something like podcasts. The third one is narrow cast category that involves different forms of narrow casting, such as mobile casting and blue casting. And the next category is physical browsing category, which includes divergent methods and technologies that can be used to distribute information to mobile phone or to provide mobile phone users to access to internet by pointing their phone at a target. This indicates something like we scan QR codes to access to their official website immediately. And the last category is called the other category, where it consists of advertising formats that did not fit very well into any other category, where it includes visual radio, in-game ad advertising, and ringback tones. So I really think that quite a lot to take in for the first time of mobile marketing, right? But well, let's not waste our energy and move on to the next type, which is mobile sales promotions. Sales promotions refer to short-term incentive to encourage the purchase or sale of a product or service. Mobile promotions are usually advertised in other media such as Unpack, Billboard, or Press. The customer is invited to send a text message to a short court number for a chance to win a prize or something. There are also something like marketers requesting more information or ordering sample by sending a text message and receiving mobile coupons or money off offers to the mobile phone. So the next mobile marketing types is mobile direct marketing. Direct marketing refers to direct communications with certain individual customers to obtain an immediate response and develop long-term consumer connections. Direct marketing is a really broad term that covers a range of marketing communications activities that are also known as sales promotions, which leads to a situation where distinguish between mobile direct marketing and sales promotion is particularly tough. If mobile direct marketing refers to the permission-based message that are personalized specifically for the customer based on their preference, like any other form of direct marketing, it's progressively overlapping with customer relationship management activities. And speaking of customer relationship management, which are known as CRM, the last step of mobile marketing that I will be sharing is mobile customer relationship management. So CRM has been identified as one of the four main mobile marketing communication tools. There is a customer service category that includes a wide variety of solutions that could be received or downloaded by customers' mobile phone. I'm sure everyone has checked in for their flights only from their phone, right? Like, well, that is how customer service works on 
under category works under mobile CRM. So there is also a mobile commerce category that includes mobile banking and brokerage, which basically means online banking, the common thing that we do in order to transfer our money to ours or even other banks gun. Um, so Faiza, would you like to continue for the next one? Thank you, Shazrina. Sure. Now let's we see and explore what are the components of mobile marketing? Okay. Firstly, the mobile marketing is a uh, the component of mobile marketing is the friend mobile friendly websites. A mobile friendly website is essentially when your regular websites can shrink down to be small enough to display on a mobile device. There's a lot of zooming, pinching, and scrolling, but the site can still be displayed and functions. It makes your website viewable on the mobile. For example, the apps like Shopee and Lazada. Other than that is mobile-friendly marketing, SMS, and MMS messages. Marketers can provide content to clients via SMS and MMS messaging. It can come through whether it's through promotions, videos, product alerts, or reminders. The third one will be the mobile-friendly advertising and landing pages. It is the feature of a single column that is easier to navigate through and improve your user experience. Don't forget about landing pages as well. If your email is mobile friendly, but the click through takes the user to a landing page that isn't mobile friendly, the user will be irritated and might as well just leave like that. For the last component, it is the mobile friendly apps. Mobile apps can help you to build deep interactions with your customer if you have the correct strategy. Examine the many sorts of apps such as productivity and commerce. This is to see if the engagement and the specific goal for your specific business can make the best way for your mobile marketing app. It's good. Now, how about the implication of using mobile? marketing towards our business. How can it change the way our business works? All right, nowadays, as we know, mobile marketing is very common to use in a business, right? Next slide, please. Okay, that is why it can influence our business well. Some of the implications are through our product. Mobile marketing is an efficient channel for new product development because it can improve efficiency by increasing accuracy and saving the time. Moreover, mobile marketing makes branding as part of the product. It was mainly used for building brand awareness, changing brand image, and enhancing brand loyalty, which can lead to increased brand awareness. In addition, it also can have some effect towards the pricing because the, in the mobile world, Retail pricing and competition tend to be highly complex due to the dynamic pricing models. Consumers can make price comparisons between internet retailers and stores while shopping, shopping and, uh, at the physical locations. And this can also help marketers to get higher profits. I'm sure some people will do a price survey first before deciding to, choose, uh, to purchase any product. Am I right? Yes, true. I always check for the price every time I want to buy any product, but except for the food store, no need to look at the price. I'll just buy it. Yeah. Yes, well, Sam, there's always an exception for foods, right? Okay, let us continue with the implications of mobile marketing towards the business. Mobile marketing also can affect the placement tool. It can help to increase efficiency of a product distributions because applications can be used to track current locations of rolling inventory or multiple truck carrying a large amount of inventory while on the move. It is really helpful because it can reduce the total amount of inventory space and costs. Uh, nice. Thank you, Shazrina. Now, let's see the implication that we, that we mean here is not something that could harm our business. It is something that gives some good effect to what the way a business works. That's true. Let's continue with the other implications, which are promotions. Next slide, please. Mobile phones have altered the way firms communicate and engage with customers. 
mobile advertising offers marketers to the potential to promote product and services in an interactive way. This will encourage customer to purchase the product or services. From the aspect of customer, the interactive capability of more marketing campaigns allow marketers to build up-to-date customer databases by inviting customer to sign up for a campaign or text back information in exchange for extra benefits. It will be easier in determining which product or services should be offered and to whom. Besides, it can create stronger relationship between firms and their customer. Lastly, it will be less costly and convenient. Consumer with time pressures may have options to browse product on a mobile phone to reduce searching costs. They just need to scroll on their phones and click buy for the products that they want. It will be as simple as that. Uh, I know right now everything is getting easier and simpler. Uh, now, why do we choose mobile marketing? I don't know why. <laughs> hmm, who's going to explain about this? Well, let me explain it to you guys. We choose mobile marketing because it can connect us with our target market easily, increase engagement, and at faster speed. When surfing the internet, more people use tablets and smartphones rather than their laptop and their desktop PC. That is why the use of mobile device has grown all across demographic. This means that you can connect with your target audience through mobile marketing, regardless of what product or services that you offer. Then how can it increase engagement, you may ask, right? Well, since the use of mobile phone has increased, people are exposed to mobile advertising. Every time you scroll on your phone, there must be some ads that can be seen everywhere else. So that's how your customer engage with your advertisement. So I'm saying that as well as uh, having access to Wi-Fi, mobile phone nowadays facilitate internet access over secular data too. With more customers switching to low cost data plans, they are able to access as much content as they choose. For businesses, this is increase the range of content that you can use in mobile marketing with no restriction, uh, in terms of image size, for example, you can use high quality, high resolution photograph and create logos to market your brand. Uh, while uh, video marketing also increasingly, increasingly popular, in which complements mobile marketing perfectly. The increased speed and availability of data means that spending more, uh, the users are spending more time watching your marketing content in their mobile device. So next slide. So now I hope that I answered your question just now. And now we have reached at the end of our presentation. A big thank you to everyone who gave us this platform for us to share the meaningful information. But before we go, let me share you some words from Jack Ma, a Chinese business magnate who said that in carrying out e-commerce, the most important thing is to keep what you're doing right now with passion and to keep it up. Next. So we had spend quite some time discovering the world of mobile marketing. Uh, another thank you for your undivided undiv attention. Thank you. Thank you so much for that very insightful presentation. I feel like I get to learn a lot as well and I bet the audience gets to learn a lot too. But before that, does anyone from the audience would like to ask a question for, to the team? You may put your question in the chat box and the team will answer it for you. Is there any question from the audience? All right. Okay, so if there's no question, thank you so much to the team for their wonderful week. How can, okay, we have one question from the audience from Nurul Ashikin. She says, Let's say I have a business using the mobile marketing platform. How can we increase our active mobile users? Can the speakers please assist Nurul Ashikin on her question? Thank you. Um, okay, I can answer that. Thank you for asking. Um, that's a good question. Um, so 
there are many ways to increase the engagement of mobile users. Um, so one of it is we can do the automated campaigns. So what automated campaigns is, it can automatically activate a message based on the user's action. For example, something let's say um, sending a coupon one day after they downloading your app or sending them a message when they haven't opened the app for too long. Message like, hey, let's check out our new design, something like that. So this kind of thing, this will be a really helpful way to increase more of your active mobile user. So I really hope this statement will be beneficial and answer your question. All right, thank you, Shazirina, for the answer. So we have a second question from Madam Jasleen. Um, the question is, how significant is mobile marketing to Malaysian IKS? IKS as in SME, right? Um, thank you for this question, uh, Madam Jocelyn. So how significant is mobile marketing to Malaysian IKS? Um, I'm afraid um, I can only answer a bit of this because um, I only understand a bit of this. Um, mobile marketing is really significant to Malaysia because um, as we can tell, um, the citizens of Malaysia really use mobile internet uh, really a lot. Like, like they use, these days they use a lot of in mobile marketing. Um, we always mark uh, promote our products on online. Like we rarely promote our products like with advertisement paper on the streets, something like that. Um, nowadays, we only use something like um, internet poster and Instagram from Instagram um, promotion. So I think that's how significant mobile marketing is. I really hope this answer your questions. All right, thank you so much for the answer. All right, last question coming from Siti Nur Karunisa. What is the difference between mobile responsive and mobile friendly? Um, I will let this my friend Daniel to answer this question. All right. Is Daniel there? All right, he's here. Uh, something that website can shrink down as, a, as the same as you can see in desktop version, right? So this allow mm -hmm. mobile users to view and browse. They use to browse and use uh, mobile responsive uh, the site while in desktop version. Uh, I show you example. I can show you some example, right? Okay. So now you can see in my phone right now, just now. So I search for cat. Right? So this is a uh, mobile friendly. You can see, uh, all the information in mobile friendly. So you can switch to mobile responsive by clicking other uh, at the bottom. I click, I click. I uh, see. You can see the information has changed. Okay. So the information has changed. You can see like you see in the laptop uh, or your desktop the same the same view you can see as your in your pc or laptop uh, so i can switch again to mobile view for mobile friendly uh, see you, it became mobile friendly again you can much much compact uh, so i help that answer your question all right thank you so much daniel for the answer uh, thank you also to the audience for giving the questions. Again, thank you so much to the team for their wonderful presentation as well as their very enlightening answer to all the questions asked. Okay, before that, uh, once again, reminder, dear attendees, do not forget to sign in your attendance. You can find the link for the attendance in the chat box. So now, moving on to our second topic for today, email marketing. This topic will be presented by Nurul, Nur Ifa Shafika binti Adham, Nurul Farahin binti Fakul Anwar, Fatia Shazwani binti Ismail, Nurin Zawana binti Bahram, and Muni Nadira Aisha binti Norlina. 
But before we begin, once again, everyone is welcome to drop any questions on the chat box and the question will be answered right after the presentation. So go ahead and feel free to ask. So now let's hear from the team. right after the presentation. So go ahead and feel free to ask. So now let's hear from the team. Right after the presentation. So go ahead and feel free to ask. So now let's hear from the team. Hello, everyone. Hello everyone, I am so glad that you could join me today. I am very excited about today's topic. Did you know what is email marketing? Next slide, please. Email marketing is the move of sending a commercial message, typically to a group of people. Email marketing tactics aim to accomplish one or more of three primary goals, which is loyalty, trust, or brand awareness. Sending email messages with the goal of improving a merchant's relationship with current or previous customers, encouraging customer loyalty and repeat business, acquiring new customers or persuading current customers to make an immediate purchase and sharing third-party ads are all examples of the term. Prior to this hike, when emails were novelties to the majority of customers, email marketing was not as effective. However, as email marketing developed as an effective means of direct communication. In the 1990s, users increasingly began referring to it as a spam and began blocking content from emails with filters and blocking program. In order to effectively communicate a message through emails, marketers had to develop a way of pushing content through to the end of user without being caught by automatic filters and spam removing software. So historically, it has been difficult to measure the effectiveness of marketing campaign because target market cannot be adequately defined. Email marketing carries the benefit of allowing marketers to identify returns on investment and measure and improve efficiency. Next slide. Before we dig in further, allow me to introduce our group members that you will be seeing throughout the rest of the presentation. To begin, I am Nurin Zawana Bahram, along with my four other team members, which is Nur Ifa Shafika, Mungi Nadira Aisha, Fatin Diana Shazwani, and Nurul Farahin. Without no further ado, let's discover the type of email marketing. Thank you, Nurin. Hello, everyone. I am Ifa. In my slot, I go through email newsletter in full depth. Fa, next slide, please. What are email newsletter? In email marketing, email newsletter are the most prevalent sort of email. They frequently incorporate news and update as the same implies to keep the audience involved. At the same time, they are made to gentle encourage people to convert. So what are the function of email marketing? As a small business, you may utilize an email newsletter to deliver useful information and resources to your subscribers. Create engaged material, including thoughts, leadership, what's and new about new services or product to offer value to your subscriber inboxes. To determine whether your newsletter is, is effective, consider whether the material aids in the development of a relationship with subscriber, boost retention and engagement, and strengths subscriber loyalty. Do you guys know over 83% of B2B marketers now utilize email newsletter as a marketing tool? 
Business can use email newsletter to engage with customer and lead who have been show interest in their organization on a regular basis, making them a very warm audience. Not only can you convey critical information through this channel, but you can also help build a reputation, strength, relationship between uh, between you and customer and move customer through your sales funnel. Far next slide, please. Email is the most used method of communication. Email is becoming one of the most widely used mode of communication. According to statistics, there, there are, will be over 8.2 billion email subscribers worldwide in 2022. Sending marketing material to an email address ensure that your communication are delivered to a platform where your target audience is almost certain to be spending time. Furthermore, because email newsletter are suitable, there is the benefit of those who generally want to receive company information, which is not the case with all medium. In fact, 93% of internet consumers prefer to receive brand information in their email inbox rather than their social media feed. Newsletter with opt-out assist you in reducing the size of your list of qualified leads. When someone subscribes to your email newsletter, they have shown interest in your business and have thus become a lead. They may decide that after receiving your newsletter, they want to conduct business with you even more or that they no longer want to receive your correspondence. Consumer can quickly opt out of your email newsletter, allowing you to screen out the people who, who are not potential sales lead and focus on the people who are still interested in becoming your customer. They provide you with a platform to promote yourself as a thought leader. Email newsletter are a terrific way for a business to deliver useful practical information while also showcasing their expertise. As a result, email newsletter can assist you in demonstrate that you are a thought leader in your field and a business worth doing deal with. They provide an opportunity to market new product or services. If you are a growing company, you probably offer a new item or services on a regular basis. Newsletter assist you in spreading the new about new item and keeping your subscriber up to date. This is useful, especially for respondents who have not been on your email list for a long time but have not looked at your offering in a while. So that's all from me for today. Thank you. Previous slide, please. Thanks to Ifa. So I will share about acquisition email. What is acquisition email? Acquisition email is some type of advertising in an email campaign in the form of a sponsored link or as a complete email. Email acquisition are the best practices for growing a healthy list. Growing your email list is a great way to gain a strong base of prospects that you can engage with through lead generating strategies. While lists do shrink over time due to opts out and other factors, there are many ways you can cultivate a strong, healthy list using simple email acquisition best practices. Let's start with using content since content marketing is at the forefront of many digital marketing strategies. Next slide, please. So I will share with you guys five ways to grow your email list with content. First is create a lead magnet, often called a gated offer. You can give away a white paper, ebook, checklist or cheat sheet in exchange for a potential customer's email address. Make sure your giveaway item is valuable and relevant. Second is provide content upgrades. Sometimes credit offers aren't worth it to all of your visitors. If you have a high performing blog post, you can add to it and offer it as a content upgrade with email sign up and increase your conversion by 529%. There is offer bonus tools or analysis. You can offer intriguing surveys, analysis, or tools specifically designed for your audience to get them to swap their email address for some insight. Fourth, 
run a contest, stage a giveaway in exchange for customer email address. You can get users to click to your website or sign up through your social media account. Last is include a, a call to action that is CTA on your Facebook page. Adding a CTA to a business page on Facebook allows you to leverage the engagement of your audience to tempt them into exchanging contact information for access, a lead magnet, or other offers. Besides sign up, you can use other buttons such as contact us, use app, play game, shop now, or, or watch video. Linking to the landing page is a great way to acquire new leads. Lastly, I want to share what you should not to do when practicing acquisition. Sometimes, eager email marketers get caught up in the excitement and rely on poor practices to grow their list. Unfortunately, with disastrous results, the takeaway is simple. Don't do the following. Buy an email list, send sporadic emails, send generic emails, send the same email to everyone on your list, Forget to check your email for times. Ignore your analytics. Forget to send welcome emails immediately. If you keep these few rules in your mind, you can have a buzzing, thriving list that stays healthy and engaged over time. That's all from me. I will pass it to Farahin. Thank you. Thank you to the previous presenter, Fatin Diana. Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. I am Farah, so I will explain about retention email. Okay, we already know what is email marketing and some of the techniques. Therefore, we should know how we can retain our customers. Any business needs an intentional retention email to cultivate greater loyalty and trust from the existing customers. So, what is retention email? Retention is the continued possession, use, or control of something. What is retention email? Retention email is a practice to sniffing out opportunities of customers so that they can re-engage them back with the product and getting the best value. Also, they can highlight their words to the business. So how can we write our retention email? First, we need to be specific. What does it mean? Our email should be in details and have a clear desire. First, we need to identify the name and the company name. People don't open email from the stranger, so don't spam in their inbox. Second, addressing them by name. We should address our customer as if we are talking to them individually and face to face. Next slide, Pa. So, there are five types of retention email that we can use to boost our customer loyalty. The first one is use targeted onboarding emails. Onboarding email is a kind of welcoming email. Onboarding email also an opportunity to get new customers. And this email briefly explains what and the product, the business do, and what the customer can expect going forward. This benefit is it can show the business to have close the knowledge gap that usually exists between the new and the old customers so that they can get quickly full value from their product. Second, we can use free training emails. We are going to educate our customers on our product features. So to grow ourselves and scale the business, we must aim for repeat sales from the early adopters such as the new customer and the existing customers. The best way of doing this is ensuring the, they derive the most value from our product. So we must educate customers by sending them the valuable and relevant content, such as we are offering them free training courses and webinars. Okay, free training opportunities, especially for complex software products, we give users the chance to truly grasp the product features and get a good idea of what they can accomplish using it. Uh, number three, we can use leverage milestone emails. Milestone email is to celebrate our customer success. Uh, we can know that if the consequences of growth is that you stop caring about others. You easily forget to acknowledge your customer success, especially the small significant one. So we should use the congratulation email and keep on uh, connection with the customers. Number four, 
uh, re-engage normal users with a witty, we have missed you email. You may have seen this email shown up in your inbox with the subject line, we have missed you, such as from Netflix, YouTube. So most inactive users will re-engage if you make an effort to reconnect with them. Even though they may have a bad up subscription, the fact that the customer is not using the service means it is going to be hard for them to justify renewal when the subscription finally expires. If they are on a free plane, getting them to upgrade will be just as difficult. So lastly, we can appreciate our customer for their loyalty and continue custom with thank you emails. After every conversation, an email sent up, download, survey response or sale, you must acknowledge the customer's action. You should not stop at thanking the customers. Use the email as an opportunity to keep the conversation going. Thanking your customer for a conversation is a decent thing to do, and your customer expect you to do so. Uh, customer love to be appreciated, so we should thank them. And because most customer love to be dotted on, they will gladly let you hold their handbag to the side. That's all from me. Thank you. Thank you to Noro Farahin. Next, I'm going to talk about promotional email. What is promotional email? Promotional email is to get the word out to potential customer about your new product or service. Common email promotion include coupons or other discount, access to exclusive content, or admittance to an invitation on the event. The goal of this email promotion is to convince customer to make a purchase. Next slide, please. Next, we are going to talk about how to write a successful promotional email. To write this successful promotional email, you must know five things. Number one, personalize the email subject. People are more likely to open their email with personalized subject. Rather than sending out mass duplicate, marketers should include customer data such as their name and their last order details. Aside from the subject, the content should also fit the profile and preference of the target audience. Plus, the promotional email should stick to the subject line and remember you have to stay on topic. Number two, keep it concise but powerful. Once a recipient click on the email, there is a tiny window of time to grab their attention. Rather than using technical word that will likely tire the reader, one should use easy to understand language. Also, long paragraph can be overwhelming. Use short, relevant, and strong word. This one works the best. At the same time, you have to remember that the email should be catchy and engaging. Number three, focus on singular message. Having more than one message in your promotional email will make it less effective. Cluttered emails are harder to read and the subscriber are likely to miss the primary goal of it. Instead, a marketer's goal should be to ensure that the content and calls to action emphasize the primary objective of the promotional campaign. Use word or phrases that prompt action. Active calls to action can increase click-through and lead to sale. Number four, make the email mobile friendly. A large percentage of target audience will view their promotional email on their, on their mobile device. Therefore, it is necessary to make the email mobile friendly and easy to go through, including subheading, image, and list that will enable the subscriber to quickly grasp the central message of your email and navigate the section easily. Number five, truly proofread it. Proofreading, even though obvious, is mostly ignored. However, typos and poorly written content can hurt your brand by diminishing your credibility. So, it is essential to go through your emails and remove any mistake that may be present. Next slide, please. Next, I'm going to talk about the most effective time to send promotional email. Um, knowing the best time and date to send promotional email can boost your brand's marketing. Tuesday followed by Thursday are the best day for sending your marketing email. And for the most click-through and conversion, you can send your emails in the morning, and I preferably suggest at around 10 in the morning. Research shows that afternoon is also great because many people are less active at their work, and they will looking for the distraction. You can use a beautiful email template for your promotional email um, to draw the attention of your audience during these hours of day. Um, next, you have to remember, too many promotional email can become a border and lead to users unsubscribing from the service. The number of email you send should depend on the competition in industry and type of product or service that you're promoting. 
Next slide, please. And the last one, what to put in your promotional email. There are four things you must put in your promotional email. The first one, a sender's name. To avoid recipient moving your promotional email to their spam folder, you must make it clear who sent the email. For this purpose, you can use your business name alone or you can use your name. Number two, an attractive subject line. The subject line affects the open rate of your promotional email. It should therefore be captivating and about six to ten words in length. You can test different variants of your subject line to discover the best one. And number three, main message. Highlight the promotion or offer you are selling to your subscriber. It can be text accompanied by image. Um, this section can be subdivided to make it more optimized. And the last one, call to action. Sell the message using action-oriented words. However, marketers should be wary of using words that will make the message too pushy. Um, next, I will give to Nurin Zawana to give a conclusion about email marketing and that's it for me. Thank you, Muni. So I'm going to proceed with the conclusion of email marketing. So in conclusion, that email marketing is a proven online marketing element that can reach a high percentage of addresses and improve customer experience. A prerequisite for this approach is a structure for your message that is well thought and content that is highly relevant to your target group. More importantly, email marketing allows you to build relationship with leads, customer and past customers. It's your opportunity to speak directly to them in their inbox. At time, that is convenient for them. Coupled with the right messaging, email can become one of your most impactful marketing channels. New technologies in digital marketing has moved a great deal. The market approach has also evolved with the rise of new technology. Digital marketing has a number of advancements and improvements in its strategy. So customers and marketers need to learn about the pros and cons of digital marketing and email marketing to get the best out of it. When you don't learn the pros and cons of digital marketing, you won't reap the full benefit. And that brings us to the end. And I would like to thank all of you taking time mean the world to me. That's all from us. Thank you and have a nice day. Thank you so much to our second team for that very informative presentation on email marketing. There were a lot of points presented by the team that is very useful to be applied. So thank you once again. So we have a few questions coming from the audience. I can see in the chat box. So the first question is from Madam Jaslyn. Is email marketing good for IKS? They don't have time to craft and send out emails in their busy schedule. All right. Can I have the team to assist Madam Jaslyn on this question? Thank you, Madam Justin, for the question. I think email marketing is good for IKS. Um, if they don't have time to craft or send out the email in their busy schedule, I think they can make a, um, make an early draft to make sure that they can simply promote their marketing. Uh, if Anyone have their suggestion? All right, is that the answer for the question? Can we proceed to the next question? All 
All right, so we have the second question from Noor Amalina Zahira. The question is, what are the ways to grow email lists with content? So, thank you for your question, Amalina. Um, the way to grow email lists with content are create a lead magnet. Second, provide content upgrade. And last one, offer bonus tool or analysis. I hope I have answered your question. Okay. Thank you so much, Ifa, for that answer. So we have a third question from Hazim Ghazali. How to overcome exceeding a customer's inbox with too many emails, causing them to be less interested in seeing? I think that's a great question. Can the team please assist us? Um, like what I say um, for my slide back then, um, there's a way why you have to make sure that you write um, the best and the successful promotional emails because you don't want them to get uh, annoyed with the, with the many message that they got. So that's why you have to make sure that you put um, the four things that I say the promotional email. Um, the first one is sender's name, an attractive subject line, main message, and call to action. The four things can help them um, to help your business to make sure that they don't um, put your put your personal uh, your email promotion to their spam folder. I hope that helped to answer your question. All right. Thank you so much for the answers. Thank you. For, uh, the, thank you to the audience for giving the questions. So again, thank you for the presentation and for answering all the questions asked. Guys did great. So bef uh, before that, once again, the attendees, do not forget to sign in your attendance. You can find the link for the attendance in the chat box. So now we're going to move on to the last presentation for today. We'll be hearing on the topic display advertising, which will be presented by Muhammad Anik Nukman bin Abu Nisa. Muhammad Hakimi bin Muhammad Ghazali, Hamirul Imran bin Hamza, and Ni Akif Husaini bin Ni Hamza. Again, dear audience, please feel free to drop any questions on the chat box, and all the questions will be answered right after the presentations. So, without further ado, let's move on to the topic display advertising. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Hello everyone. I'm happy to be here with you today. What I want to share with you is about display advertising. Today's topic is very interesting for those who like to search for information on Google and shopping online. We'll certainly find ads that display about, about product for sale. Surely you are curious about that. This is known as display advertising. Next, without further ado, let us begin for me to introduce the members of the group starting with me, Muhammad Akimi bin Muhammad Ghazali, with Nik Akif Usaini bin Nik Hamza, Hamirul Imran bin Hamza, and Muhammad Anik Tuman bin Abu Nisa. This is the phase that we explain in detail about display advertising to you all. To know more about display advertising, I give this presentation to Muhammad Anik to continue it. Muhammad Anik, this is the time for you to shine. Thank you, Muhammad Akimi, for the great introduction. Hello and Assalamualaikum for all of you. Before I get into my agenda, once again I introduce myself. My name is Muhammad Aninokman bin Abu Nisa. And now it's my turn to in charge for the show. Let's begin with this one, which is today's agenda. Before we go deep about display advertising, let me show to you our timeline for the show to make sure that everyone are clear about what we are going to show to you all okay all right 
let's get into it. As we know, our main topic is display advertising. For the startup, let we us know about what is display advertising. This point will be explained by myself, Mama and Norman. So stay tuned, guys. All right, then let's move on to the second point, which is how it works. This point will be elaborate more about it by Hamirul Imran on how display advertising work in marketing products or services. Next, to the next point. Our next point will be presented to you all by Ni Akif Husaini, which is why we use it. Yes, of course, it is one of the very important content brought to you by Ni Akif. He will explain deep about why we use display advertising. That's the good point. Next, we have Muhammad Hakimi, with his point is where can we place? This point is quite powerful too. Why I say like that? Well, what is the point if we know how to use display advertising, but we use it on the wrong place? Because of it, Hakimi will explain to you guys where is the right places to use display advertising. Alright, and now we have reached the last point of the show which is when to use will be presented by Ni Akif Saini again. He will explain on when is the right time to use display advertising. Alright? So, that was our timeline for today. Then, let's move on to the first point of our today's agenda. Next slide, please. Now that we are given an overview about our presentation today, and now let's start with the first point that we have stated earlier. The first point is which uh, the first point is which is what is display advertising. Generally, display advertising refers to the process of advertising the products or services through visual like image videos on networks of publisher websites such as Google Display, uh, Facebook, Instagram and so on. Display ads are placed on relevant third party websites in the form of banner, image, text and ads. Display advertising is pretty much a blanket term that includes every visual ad placed on the on a website. However, it can be divided into three basic categories. Alright, let me start for the first one. Alright, for the first one is site placement advertising. In this type of display advertising, the advertiser or we call it the marketer chooses the website they would like to run their display ads on placement are locations where you where your ads can be appear a placement can be a website or a specific page on the site uh, a mobile app video content or even an individual ad unit there can be a lot of benefit when you choose this type of display advertising. I give you one example. If your typical customer spends a lot of their time on YouTube and you want your ads to appear there uh, at the website as the placement, you can get a lot of engagement through it. The second one is contextual advertising. Sounds complicated, isn't it? And I am very sure that you guys haven't heard about it before, right? Well, it sounds like complicated, but in reality, 
it's a simple thing okay i will explain it in this type of display advertising uh, networks place ads on relevant relevant websites contextual advertising is a form of targeted advertising of ad advertisement appearing on website or other media such as content display in mobile browser hmm maybe you guys don't understand it yet but don't worry i will give you one example context contextual advertising system scans the text of a website for keywords and return the advertisement to the web page based on those based on those keyboards for example if the user is viewing a website about sports and that website use contextual contextual advertising the user may see advertisement for sports that's it easy right now you understand it and then for the last one is remarketing remarketing display ads appear in front of the user who have been on your website or post click landing page but they have left the page without completing a relevant conversation goal it was like when you visiting a website and you leave it without making any purchases on the website earlier and then there are ads or follow-up emails you get from a business the marketing lets you reach out these past visitors offer them a targeted incentive and hopefully convert them into the customers i give you one interesting fact about remarketing uh, there is one survey found that about 75 percent of consumers noticed that they were being retargeted by using remarketing ads how cool is that and that it's from me and now i will conclude a little bit about what is display advertising uh, basically in a simple sentence display advertising is a uh, advertising on the internet website apps or social media by using banners or other formats uh, such as image uh, text or video and so on for the next slide i pass the microphone to hamir imran to proceed it thank you okay thank you to anik for present the first point and explain about what is the display ads so i will continue with the example of display advertisement this example i get uh, from social media like, which is instagram facebook and youtube um, actually there is more example like on websites um, for websites the advertisers can put their ads on the left um, on the right or bottom of the websites like we we uh, usually see if we open websites at google and but sometimes it will pop up during we scroll the website mm -hmm. every kind of ads can be used or can be done but it costs based on the style that we want and what we like we usually can see the advertisement at social media because um, social media is the best platform that can reach many people because of the users that come from around the world um, that is why many business or company use social media uh, to promote 
their new product because uh, social media is uh, easy to use and it's already be great and just put the ads and everything is uh, is done by the social media itself so for the next point um, is how it works uh, we explain how it works by using Google advertisement so Google display ads rely on cookies and data from sign in users to keep track of the websites and search they make these cookies are signals that Google use to help advertisers reach their target audience uh, there are a few ways you can target users with these cookies using Google Display Ads and the most common method is retargeting wherein you target ad towards potential buyers who have visited your website before like we actually you take data from people who already visit uh, our website um, most uh, display advertisers take it a step further as well by segmenting this audience based on specific page views or how recently they visited your website the typical retargeting audience is broken up into a few buckets is for all users and each on it only change their days the first one for all all users and seven days 14 days 30 days and all time it means the ads is um, put during the time that we want these are called uh, engagement audiences they show the level of engagement of user has with our site they are broken out to tell you which users have been on your site within the last week two weeks one month or longer this data allows you to market to the different segments in a unique way based on how long it has been since they visited your website yeah but i just want to ask everyone if you guys notice that when we look for something for example um, uh, we search at youtube about uh, laptops or mobile phones that we want to buy then when we open social media like facebook or instagram then suddenly there will be asked about laptops and mobile phones we are looking for or suggestion about other device that related lah. but what's uh, even weird when we just intend to buy something uh, but suddenly the relevant ads that we want come out so that is the data from that facebook or insta take from google lazada or shopee or youtube and so on to find out um, the target audience you want to reach um, the advertisers want to reach but if we only intend to buy and not yet search about it and suddenly the ads come out about the product i don't know maybe there is maybe element of the illuminati i don't know <laughs> okay so that's all from me so next i'll pass the next point to the to hakimi
Thank you. Thank you, Miroy. So I will continue for the next part. Why we use display advertising? Number one, display ads are visually appealing. One of the first benefit of display advertising is that display ads can be designed and styled. Regular PPC ads are text only and have to adhere to character counts, limiting how effectively and quickly you can capture attention and convey your message. With digital display advertising, you can use graphics, video, audio and your company's branding to stand out to users and attract their attention. The display example from local IQ shows how you can use design to capture attention with your display advertising. Here is a display at our team create to grab attention and drive users to a specific blog post. Number two, display at support brand awareness and visibility. In order to get a new customer, that customer needs to be aware that your business exists. And according to Lecology, consumer must encounter a brand 10 times before they think about doing business with them. Up from 7, just a few years ago, display advertising allows you to go on the offensive and get in front of consumers before they need a specific good or service from you. By the time they need what your business offers, you have a better chance of being who they consider since they have encountered your own time and again online. Number three, display as are targeted. When running digital marketing campaigns, it is important to target the people most relevant to your business. Just as with PPC and Facebook advertising targeting, you can create specific parameters for your LGBT display advertising. Besides your display as appear on, which geographic area they appear in, and which demographic or niche market they appear to. For example, a car dealership can target people of driving age who live in their zip code and are visiting auto-related websites. So next, I will pass to Kimi. Thank you, Niakif. In this part of my sharing, I would like to talk about where can display ad be placed. When you advertise with Google Ads, your ads can appear on different places across web depending on how you target your ads, to whom you choose to show them, and the type of ad that you created. For begin my sharing today, I would like to begin with the first point on the Google search and other search site. Your ad can appear on Google when people look for the product or service that you offer. When you create your ad, you will choose a set of keywords, the word or the phrase that will trigger your ad to show or to pop up. Then, when people search using the words or phrase you pick, your text ad can be appear alongside or above search result. Net search network ad result on the page will come or pop up when the people search on the Google result. Google search site ad can appear above or below search result on the Google search. They can appear beside above or below search result on the Google Play in the shopping tabs and Google Maps 
including the map apps. Google search partner ad might appear with the search result on the website on the Google search partner. For text ad search partner including hundreds of non-Google websites as well as Google video and other Google sites. Now, let's remove to the second point on the website that your customer visit. You can also choose to show your ad to people as they browse the web. Your text, image, and video ad can appear on the Google Display Network. Display Network ad will come or pop out when customer visit the web to find something that need. The display network is the collection of websites including specific Google website like Google Finance, Gmail, Bloggers and YouTube that show ads. This network also includes mobile sites and apps that customer always visit to find something. If you have ever seen ad on your favorite new site or in your Gmail account and wonder how it go there, now you know website like this are the part of the Google Display Network. Your ad can appear on website based on the targeting method that you choose on the display network. There are the several ways to target your ads. First, choose the keyword or topic related to what you offer. Second, choose specific website or pages. Third, choose specific audience based on their interest, demographic, or whatever they have visited your website before. Learn more about where ads might be appear on this display network to know more about ads. Now we're going for the final point and I'm looking for on the different device. You can show your ads to people as they are search or visit website on the go. Your text ads can appear when people search on the Google from their mobile device and tablet. Your text, image and video ads can appear on Google Display Network website when people visit this website from high and mobile device such as iPhone, Android device, or tablets. Your ads can also appear on mobile apps which are considered part of our display network. I briefly summarize the main issue where can ad be placed. There are a lot here and a lot to diggers before hopping into a display advertising. You will first want to understand if display advertising is worth your effort, understand what your goal are, what asset and content you need, and then how you will track and optimize performance over time. That's all from me. I will pass the time now to the next presenter, Nick Akif, to explain to us the topic of how use the topic of how we use display ads. Back to you, Nick Akif. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. I will continue the next part, which is when we use display advertising number one 
if your product or service is more visual. One of the main advantage display ads have over search ads is that they can include image and video. This is great for promoting consumer products and services that really heavily on visual demonstration such as apparel, home decor, vacation package, adventure or entertainment. This play ad also work particularly well with visual digital assets like video, ebooks, infographic and other apps. Note, Google has made it increasingly easy for advertisers to create video campaigns especially for those who can leverage existing video creative. This can be an extremely powerful display advertising option since people are more likely to engage with video content than text or even image ads. Number two, to create awareness among those with passive intent. People browsing websites and seeing display ads are not actively searching for a product or service. They are probably still in the discovery or awareness stage of the marketing funnel, researching their option with passive intent. This makes the display network great for creating demand for your product or service, even if people don't know they need, rather than answering demand like the search network. In other words, it allows you to cultivate a feeling of want and need instead of immediately capitalizing on one that already exists. By using Google's targeting options and appearing on sites that are popular among your target audience, you can quickly build brand awareness before moving on to more high intense search engine advertising. Number three, tourist niche markets. Part of the reason display as successfully drive brand awareness is because they are generally found on site where potential customers are already spending their time. Google matches your keywords and ads to relevant web page across the over 2 million websites on the GDN. This means you can easily cater to a niche audience with interest target ads and or contextual ads. For the next part, I will pass to Amirul. Thank you. So, uh, our team already explained about the display advertisement, which is what it is, how it works, what we use, where it can be placed, and when we can use the advertisement. I hope we can learn and get new knowledge about this topic and can be used in our our life. Thank you for all the presenters and everyone who joining us, lending some errors, spending some time to hear our presentation. That's all from us. Thank you everyone and have a nice day. See you guys again. Thank you so much to the team for such an insightful presentation. I bet there were a lot of helpful points throughout their presentation and I'm so glad I get to also learn about all of them. Thank you once again. But before that, does anyone from the audience would like to ask any question to the team? You may put your questions in the chat box and the team will answer it for you. Okay, so we have a few questions from the audience. The first question is from Muhammad Irfan. What are the benefits of display advertising? Thank you, Moifan, for the question. So the benefit of display advertising is, number one, ads can be creative. The space may be small, but that doesn't mean that ads can be intricate. In fact, 
the digital format opens opportunities for a range of tactics to grab the user's attention, such as animation, rich graphics, and large call to action buttons, just to name a few. Number two, ads can reach a very targeted audience. Example, a wedding dress retailer can target brides to be in a geographical area who have been visiting wedding related website. And the last one, ads can be retargeted to interested consumers. We have all been retargeted by an advertiser. That's when you have looked at a jacket on website. Then a day later, you see an ad for the same jacket and store as an ad in your web browser. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nick, for the answer. So the next question we have is, what do I need for a digital display and campaign? Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, the best place to start is with uh, create objective. Uh, do you want to increase your brand awareness? Uh, are you encouraging customer to sign up for something? Is your goal is to generate uh, qualified leads? Your goal will determine not only the creative of your ad, but the media buying process as well. The result that you hope to achieve through display advertising will be dependent on your objective. Hope that answer the question. All right. Thank you, Anik, for the answer. The third question we have is from Madam Jaslyn. What makes a good and impact impactful display advertising? Can the team please assist us on the question, please? Hmm. Good and impact display advertising can be need, can be gained by if the advertisers can attract people to to use to. Hmm, Can I interrupt? Yes. Uh, I think what makes a good and impactful display advertising is uh, number one, uh, uh, was a eye-catching banner or ads. Uh, and uh, uh, number two, uh, what makes a good and impactful display advertising is uh clear information about what you are uh, selling either either it is a service or brands okay thank you so now moving on to the last question we have from the audience from hazim ghazali what are the limitations of display advertising all right bismillahirrahmanirrahim Thank you for the question. Uh, what are the limitations of this display advertising? Okay, first of all, is uh, about this is advantage of digital marketing first. So what uh, disadvantage is the high competition, the digital marketing campaign, uh, such as should be well through or stand out from from and going for grab attention and create impact on the target audience since the competition has grown many fold in the recent past. So from that we know uh, digital marketing or uh, advertising is uh, grow so fast. So uh, depending ability on technology, uh, something is disadvantage for digital marketing, time consuming and security and privacy issue are the advantage for the uh we all we call it as a limitation of display advertising uh i think i have uh, that's all for me thank you 
Thank All right. Thank you, Kimi. Right. Thank you to the audience for the questions. And again, thank you so much to the team for their wonderful presentation, as well as their very enlightening answer to all the questions asked. Dear attendees, if you have made it this far, congratulations, because now you have mastered three very valuable knowledge, which is mobile marketing, email marketing, and display advertising. I also would like to congratulate all the speakers for their very brilliant and wonderful presentations for today. And thank you so much for sharing with all of us such an insightful information. We really hope that you get to learn a lot with Digital Marketing 101 session today, and we are already reaching the end of our event. Don't forget to join us again on 29th November to learn more topics about digital marketing. We are looking forward to see you there. Until then, stay safe and don't forget to adhere to the SOPs. Thank you so much for being with us today. See you again. All the speakers, please uh, return back to Google Meet for a photo session. Thank you. No. no. Is everyone here ready? Ready for the ready for the photo? Okay, well done, everybody. Thank you for and the team. Thank you so much, everyone. Well done for today. Thank you, madam.